people, we're gonna start off these five Mod Podge hacks with one of my favorite ways to use Mod Podge to stop bleed through. For demonstration purposes, today we're gonna be using one of Dollar Tree's houses I painted white and one of their stencils. I also haven't done a lot of ASMR lately, so for my ASMR lovers, I find all those sounds so satisfying. Anyhow, we're gonna take some Mod Podge and we're going to apply it over the stencil. Then you're gonna let this dry. And if you want, you could apply a second or third coat. It really depends if you're looking at the stencil and you see any gaps or any empty spaces still that the Mod Podge didn't squeeze into. The Mod Podge is creating a protective barrier around our decorative part of our stencil. This is going to allow our paint to only go onto the Mod Podge pieces because any gaps the Mod Podge done squeezed underneath of our stencil and hardened. So once we remove the stencil after we apply our color, we will see clear where the Mod Podge seeped and not any of our color. You could also accomplish this by using the same, I could have painted the stencil white and that would have also given us the similar effect, but I really love Mod Podge for this. Now I left this space right here with no Mod Podge so you could see what it looks like when it does bleed through in a section without having that one here. These stencils, <laughs> Dollar Tree, I appreciate you, but these stencils are like a one and done kind of deal. I love how this hat can really make you look artsy fartsy, even if you're bad at stenciling, it just helps clean up your stencil game. And you can see here what it would have been if I would not have put that Mod Podge on there. And because I really want you guys to see what's going on here, I'm showing you a super close up of how that Mod Podge, see the clear pieces around that paint? That's where your paint would have smooshed to if the Mod Podge wouldn't have got there first. This really is an easy way to elevate your DIY game with a little bit of Mod Podge. And just so you know, I really do use this hack here is a beautiful desk I created for my daughter with a lot of details in this stencil. I'll link this video down in the description box for you to check it out if you want more information. I've been experimenting a lot with Mod Podge lately. Thanks to a lot of your comments, by the way. And one of my favorite things I've learned is that we can create beautiful colored glass decor with a little bit of food coloring and some Mod Podge. One of my recent trips to Dollar Tree, I seen these beautiful pieces and I'm constantly told on my browsing channel that people struggle to find the things that I see in stores. Are you hanging out with me on my browsing channel? Because if you're not, here's your plug. The amount of Mod Podge and the amount of food coloring you're gonna use is gonna be entirely up to the size of the project that you're gonna be doing. I only used three little dots of the food coloring here to get this pigment. And keep in mind, you might need to mix up another batch. This stuff does not sit well for long periods of time. It hardens really quick. It also dries really quick, so that's a good thing. Do clean your glass before you get started with any glass project. I used rubbing alcohol and just let that dry. And I'm using a soft paintbrush here to apply this. I'm making sure my strokes are fairly even because we are gonna be able to see them on our first coat especially. And if you leave any heavy spots, you're gonna have clumps there and it looks a little tacky. So doing a second coat, at least at the minimum, it's going to make it look nicer. I would recommend three coats, but for the sake of the video, I just did two, okay? And to keep in theme with the Dollar Tree one, I took some little, you know, nautical gem keychain things that I had laying around from a purchase I made at Amazon and put them around the neck of our little glass piece. And people, I do know another way you can create this is by taking the food color and the Mod Podge and swirling it around the inside, you know, heating it up in the oven. But I thought to myself, I wanted to use the inside of that glass for cotton balls or Q-tips or whatever. I didn't want that product on my piece, but I still wanted to get that same beautiful colored look. And I thought this was a great idea. A very trendy thing going on in the crafty world right now with Mod Podge is called the Mod Podge Swirl Method. You're able to get these faux stained, faux frosted glass looks by swirling Mod Podge on the back of some glass. It's been my experience that finding the floating frames with two pieces of glass gives some of the best results. You can pick these up at Dollar Tree, Walmart, you know, they got them laying around. So I'm just gonna leave the front of the glass inside of our piece here and i'm going to take the back part out we're going to use a little bit of alcohol to get any excess off of this just clean our glass up 
And recently I've been told because I've made a bunch of these videos, I'll link them down in the description box for you, that putting black behind the glass is going to give you guys a better view. So to those of you that have been suggesting that, here we go. Let me know in the comments below if you enjoy this view better versus the white background. To get started, pick your stickers, pick your stencil, pick your transfers, whatever you want to do. I've done a multitude of things here. They all yield pretty great results. I'm using some Timu stickers here and I'm just going to rub them right on the front. I happen to like the stickers because they just give me a quick result and I thought these were really nice looking. I'm now going to just kind of flip that little piece right on over and clean the back of the glass. You're going to need glossy Mod Podge for this. I've tried mixing matte and glossy and I've tried just matte and I definitely get the best result using glossy Mod Podge for this. Pour a little bit out on a plate or wherever, take two fingers and then just start swirling. And you just do this all over the back of the piece. If you're happy with those results once they've dried, and this is going to take anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour, it really just depends on how thick. I wouldn't go in too heavy. The thicker it is, there's more of a chance of bubbles and some people don't like the bubbles. If the bubbles don't bother you, then by all means go ham with how thick you're applying this. And here's the first layer and I thought this actually turned out really beautiful, but from experience, I know putting that second layer on there is just going to elevate that swirl a little bit more and give you a little bit more of depth to your piece. So I did another layer and it is always a little hard to see, but I tried to give several different angles here so you guys can really get in on it. I absolutely love these pieces and making these projects. I have several videos with this down in the description box if you're interested in seeing more. For our glitter stencils, I'm gonna use mirrors for our demonstration and some Dollar Tree stencils, again, but you could use whatever you want for this. It doesn't have to be a mirror. It could just be regular glass. And obviously people use whatever color glitter you want. I'm using this one because I thought it would show up the most on film out of the three options that I had here at the house. Make sure you tape this down and you're going to also just want to do one at a time. So if you're doing several, you know, do one at a time because you need that Mod Podge to be wet. You don't want it to dry. And I would not recommend using a pouncer or a sponge for this. You don't want to oversaturate it because then it's going to extremely smush underneath of these stencils. And it's possible that those glittery bits are going to get underneath of there. So I kind of just took a brush and tapity tap 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 all over it. it. Takes a little bit of patience, but it gets the job done. Just move quickly. You know what I mean? Like tap, 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 as fast as you can. And then you're gonna do the same thing with the glitter. Look at this tap motion. Tap, tap. I got the tap and skills, man. I got them down. Now here comes the worst part. That's waiting for this to dry, and it's hard to gauge because you cannot see anything on this. It's just covered with glitter, glitter everywhere. But to be safe, I recommend at least an hour and then tap off your excess as you flip this upside down. And people, if I'm being real with y'all, I didn't wait the full hour, which is why I'm telling you to wait the full hour and you can see that there's still a little bit of wet Mod Podge right here as I'm peeling these off. But on the reveal, you can barely see any of that Mod Podge because it's clear, it just blends in. I thought these would look so cute in a kid's room. For this Mod Podge hack, you can use any surface really, wood, glass, doesn't matter. I'm going to be using this and we're going to be creating mica powder paint. I use mica powder all the time in my content and I forget to talk about this often. I'm like, as I'm thinking about this Mod Podge video, I'm like, this is definitely a hack. It is definitely a way for people to get more creative, more unique, mixing different things. And what I love so much about this is it really sticks to any surface. I have used this on mirrors. I've used this on furniture. I've used this on regular wood, all kinds of things. The mica powder bonds so well to the Mod Podge and it creates stunning, unique with a little bit of like a shine to it look. And people, this mica powder is really inexpensive. I picked these up from Amazon and I only picked them up because they were like the cheapest thing that they had. Don't start me lying to you. <laughs> there was nothing special about the mica powder. It was cheap. So I purchased it. Now to get started, you're just going to take some Mod Podge 
and mix it up. I decided to just use one plate, plop three different little sections of Mod Podge, and then I took my mica powder and I just tap, 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 tap it right on into our Mod Podge. Now be mindful because this stuff, mm, ah! <laughs> no. See what happens when you get cocky with your tappiness? <laughs> Eventually karma comes back to snacky like, nah, nah, you're not that great. Anyhow, be careful. It's messy on its own. And if you over tap, it <laughs> makes a huge mess. And then mix it up. This is going to take a little bit of patience. It probably took me a good 10 minutes to mix the three of these together because the mica powder is super, super fine. I just cut up a piece of sponge for this. You could absolutely ball up a tissue or a piece of paper towel. I've done that before. Uh, just be mindful if it sheds. You could use a little coral sponge or a regular pouncer. Any of that would work. I don't recommend using a paintbrush for this, but you do you. Don't let me tell you how to craft. <laughs> because I want to create an ombre look, I'm starting with the darkest color first at the bottom. And I did two layers on these without blending anything and I let them dry. Of course, it's all sped up so you guys don't see all that extra. But you can see we have the silvery white on the top and then the black on the bottom. And if you were using paint, I would tell you to have a paintbrush or a sponge, whichever you would be using at that point, that doesn't have anything on it to blend. But because we're using mica powder, this stuff is really thick and it also gives a little bit of a texture. You're going to just alternate your sponges and go over the lines where they kind of meet each other and just take your time with this. It's a really soothing, satisfying craft in my opinion and I could just create stuff like this all day long. I just really enjoy the process. And going back and forth, you just get this beautiful blended look. Just take your time and then move the color up and then take your lighter color and then go over the darker color and you're just going to have such a cohesive appearance with the piece. And I do wanna say that if you're gonna do this on wood, let me know in the comments below if you wanna see more with this type of stuff in the content. I will put DIYs in other Friday videos with different ways to be able to use mica powder as paint. And I'll show you different ways we can use it even with paint brushes on different types of surfaces. I love this so much. And I think this would also look amazing with some candle wax in there and some little potpourri pieces at the top, just like a little decorative aspect of it. I really love how this turned out. As always, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today, people. I hope you enjoyed these Mod Podge hacks and until next time, bye.